Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting Nightwing. I'm a big fan of Nightwing and I think his suit here is really cool and it can be done fairly easily. If you look at it, it's mainly really just two colors. Uh, there's some tinting going on with his hair, but otherwise it's pretty good. It's also a really cool sculpt. So we're going to prime it in black and we're going to do a whole bunch of uh, highlighting and some colors and all that. But uh, before I get into the actual video, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. You're great. And I'm so happy to have you. Uh, if you're interested in some of the rewards I offer or just supporting the channel, link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. Okay, starting things out, again, I've already primed him in black, and then I'm using black gray as the first level highlight. Uh, so, I normally prime very lightly. It's it's pretty much a, like a dusting of primer. It's sufficient enough to hold the paint very well. It doesn't run off, but you know, I'm not getting rid of any details or anything like this. And this one, obviously, I did a lot thicker uh, of a, uh, well, not thicker per se, but a more thorough priming. You want to make sure if you're going to use it as a base coat that it is everywhere. You don't want him to be partly blue somewhere because um, that wouldn't work. Black gray from Vallejo, if you are, if, if you have, you know, what is it? Man, see, I can't even remember right now, like five bucks or whatever. Whatever. If you have five bucks right now, you don't know what to do with, get some black uh, black gray from Vallejo, a fantastic color to have in the uh, repertoire in your paint uh, catalog, just because it's such a great um, uh, highlight for black. It just it, it it's really good. And if you are tempted to ever use black, a lot of times you don't actually want to use pure black in a combo book style painting like this. Yes. Um, uh, a lot of times though, you end up uh, not wanting necessarily pure white or pure black. So this. Black, uh, black gray is a great substitute for that. It'll still look plenty dark. Um, there's obviously the white gray alternative that Vallejo also offers. So if you got 10 bucks spare or whatever it is or wherever your shop, um, get that as well because it's also really, really great. Uh, so for this, um, again, you're just... The important part here, um, and I'm going to pump the highlights a lot. This is supposedly a bodysuit. You can think of it like a spandex suit kind of thing. And so it's going to be super shiny. Uh, so it's going to be highly reflective, um, is kind of how I'm going to be painting it. You kind of want to have an idea of a light source. You want him lighted everywhere. You're not trying to do some artistic thing where it's, you know, dark in the back and there's a spotlight on him kind of thing. Um, however, uh, as some kind of angle or some sense of where the light is coming from can certainly help here. All right, now this is not white. I'm never gonna be using white here, except uh, much later on. This is just a little bit of white added to the black gray. So uh, in an attempt to, first of all, keep the colors down, and also just because I tend to get highlights this way instead of swapping to a different color. You know, I'm not going to a uniform gray or something like that from here. I'm just adding a little bit of white and then adding kind of an intermediate highlight for the extreme highlight we're gonna do normal. So if you were going to normally highlight a little bit more realistically, this is probably how you would layer it up. Uh, you would just kind of lightly, you know, add a little bit of white over and over again. Obviously I'm going for the comic book style uh, painting that I've been doing with Batman Gotham City Chronicles and so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy here in a, in a bit, but I think it really really looks good. Um, uh, otherwise, I, I was talking about the lighting, unlike his muscles, uh, that's really the big part there is like where the light would be reflecting on the muscles. Um, and then uh, otherwise just kind of going about and highlighting everything. Uh, you don't need to worry about the middle of his hands, those are going to be blue. Um, so just, I mean you see, you can see the art, but just don't forget that. Uh, and uh, but yeah, otherwise you're just kind of putting this in about 80% of what you painted before. Um, 80 to whatever. One of the reasons I'm using, by the way, a brush versus like a micron pen, especially for the black lining, is because at the end of the day I want it to look kind of brushed, right? The whole point is to kind of make it look a little, a little like uh, the page was inked. You know, and a lot of times there they they'll use pens, but they'll also use a brush and have a little bit of that brush mark. And I think that's actually a good thing to have. I'm I'm fine with that little bit of inconsistency. I don't want it to look. Um, I I guess the difference between drawn and painted, right? I, I still want it to look kind of painted. Um, and you know, it's then it's just it's it's a little bit easier just to keep going with your brush. 
All right, so as I said, we're going to be going crazy. Now, this is not pure white, but it looks pretty close to it because it's right against this black. It is definitely gray, though, um, just a, a much lighter gray. So I've added a lot more white here. And so I'm, I'm, this is going to be a pretty drastic um, highlight. And these kind of high, high reflection points where the light is literally beaming right back to you give it the sense of being a shiny material or a smooth material kind of like a, a, a bodysuit would be so this is definitely kind of what you want to do if you're wanting to uh, kind of get that texture and that's something I don't think we think of enough when it comes to painting miniatures is what's the texture we're painting um, and which in turn affects uh, how you would highlight it obviously and kind of its reflectivity and stuff like that but um, you know, there's even the chance of like adding hash marks to something or stippling or stuff like that. I've been toying around with playing around with that a little bit, and you know, adding some of those kind of artificial texture stuff like stippling and, and hashing and um, stuff like that, just to just to kind of give it a sense of like if it's a leather coat, you should probably do some some hash stuff. Though I don't I don't know. It's it's just a thought. What do you think? Does that sound like a cool idea? I think it does. So you can see on the foot, for instance, I didn't put it in the middle. I put the highlight on the right side. And what that does is, again, it kind of gives it a sense of where the light's coming from. Um, I'm not perfect at it. I'm just an average guy, as you know. And so, you know, like like on, on his bottom there, it should be more towards the left instead of the direct back lighting there. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, there can be multiple light sources. Rarely are you ever having, uh, are you ever under one light sword, source. Here where I am right now, I have my light kind of you know behind me in my in my room in my office area here and uh and then i also have the window open so there's two light sources kind of filling in this space and obviously it bounces around and off the walls and everything too so um it, it's okay to have it kind of everywhere again you don't need to be drastic um but a lot of people do that uh especially with like osl or object source lighting a lot of people make that stuff go crazy um you'll see that a lot in like a kingdom death monster uh, minis when people will paint their their starting uh, unarmored set where they have little lanterns and they'll be like come in complete shadow and then the light source is like full on on the front so it's like completely lit up on one half and the one half is completely dark definitely an artistic and cool thing to do but not very realistic all right so for the hair um again at the very top obviously where it, it parts really any curves are where you'll see um, usually a reflection um it's also helpful to uh kind of pop out the the shape of the hair so again you're going to be looking at this mini from far away and so um giving it a, a kind of uh texture to it i think really helps all right now next up we have uniform gray this is back to the normal stuff this is what you've seen me do with all of the miniature bases and i'll continue to do this so they're all fairly uniform i think it matches most of the maps pretty well as also and really th this kind of texture doesn't match all of the maps and so you know it, it's it, it's fine so the uniform gray base coat um you can do this whenever you feel like you want to just be careful around the feet obviously um but you know i i did it and in the middle you probably just don't want to do it all the way at the end because you're gonna put a wash on it all right so he does have a face so basic skin tone for the face and you're gonna get some of his neck um, and he's got a little bit of forehead showing and then like half his face this by the way I think really is the first part that this character looks like a character uh, when he's just all black you just you're just not seeing a whole lot once you add this kind of bright color to it though I think it really helps um, and it's, he's got a great sculpt, by the way. I mean, the, the detail level is really good here. So he's got the cheekbones and the jawline and everything going on there, his ears even. Um, the hair goes down all the way to cover the back of his neck, so he's going to have to get it right into there. And uh, you, you're going to paint this mask, so I don't worry too much about the mask. I would worry about the hair, though. Don't, don't, don't get any of this on the hair if you can help it. Now, because it has such a great sculpt, I think it's worthy of a wash, and so we're going to do some flesh wash here, and that's going to just kind of sink into um, the the different, you know, changes in his face, you know, his lips and his jawline and, and, and that kind of stuff, which is really nice. Uh, it just kind of helps make it look a bit more realistic, and then we can highlight it up. Now, pastel blue for this. I love Vallejo. If you see this, one coat going directly over black looks fantastic 
That's great. You're going to see me do the Void Shield Blue Rim, that which is Army Painter, and you're going to see it's not going to cover as good. I'm shaking them and I'm doing all that stuff. It just isn't going to cover as good. This is a perfect cover right away, and that's awesome. Uh, there is a little bit of a raised portion here, so you want to make sure to get those edges and just take your time. You know, you don't want to have to come back in and, and you know, use your black or your black gray or whatever to kind of to kind of highlight it up but and then uh the, the glove goes all the way down his fingers or whatever so there is a bit of a an odd separation where his hand is i don't know if it was disassembled or if they're making that kind of like a, a separate glove um but just just paint it in there you'll be good to go but anyway, yeah, this this pastel blue is is it's just really really nice. I like it. Um, I, I believe in a few spots it did, it, you know, I I wanted to do a second coat, so I I did it some touch ups, but it never once got a like a whole second coat. Like I just it wasn't covering. Like that was never an issue. Um, but yeah, this is a great base coat. I'm gonna do some stuff with it, but uh, it definitely I really like the. It's kind of like a Tron thing, right? He's all black even his hair, and then he's got this like splash of color, which is really fun. Alright, so now we're going to have the Draconoff Nightshade, and this is going to just be a wash. Part of this is to change the color a little bit, make it a little bit more blue. So I like how bright or luminous the the pastel blue is, but it's not, not a very deep blue, and I did want it a little bit deeper. And so this is a good combination of the two, is using the pastel blue and then adding this blue wash onto it. Um, another thing is, is it'll guide me in my black lines. So when you're doing this black lining comic book style, the need for a wash is very minimal. Where normally the wash would pool and darken, you're going to be putting a black line typically anyway. Uh, it'll get subtle things that you wouldn't call out with a black line, but otherwise um, you can use it to shift the color, uh, which is what I'm doing here, and to guide where your lines go, which again I was doing here. Okay, so now I added some white into the pastel blue, and this is again just to add the highlight, and uh, th this really sells it. Again, it gives it a little bit more, it makes it seem like there's a bit more volume, right? I mean, it just looks more realistic, first of all, but it, it adds another dimension, I feel, to where it just seems a little bit more realistic. And again, these, these slash marks that I'm not smoothing out helps it allude to being something highly reflective, almost like a plastic or something like that is kind of what I was imagining here. Um, so again, you can use your brush strokes strategically as, as, as you wish. Um, and same with your black lines and all that kind of stuff to really um, give a sense of whatever it is you're trying to uh, paint here. And so for those I did, you know, the slash marks on those uh, kind of smooth curves and then here I'm doing like this, these blobbous reflection points which again would be, I don't know, kind of uh, latexy, spandexy, uh, plasticky kind of reflection points which is kind of what I'm going for here. Alright, now we're back to the basic skin tone, and again, I'm not going to add any white to this, it's just a basic skin tone with a, as the highlight. Uh, because of the wash, it darkened it enough to where uh, I, I think this is you know, a really good thing. And uh, it, with very small details like this, 
you run the risk if you go too contrasty where it doesn't look like flesh anymore. So I didn't want to be super, like it, you would get that kind of plasticky, shiny, reflective thing. Uh, and so I want it still slightly smooth here. I'm not really blending it a whole lot. I didn't thin this down enough to be like a glaze or anything like that. Um, but I'm not going to pump up the highlights crazy anyway. I'm going to add some black lining so it doesn't really matter. Now, to spice things up a little bit, and because I feel like the art shows this somewhat, I'm going to make his mask a different blue, and this is my Cantor blue, which is my unofficial Batman blue. Um, I'm going to be using this a lot with most of the blues in in this uh, board game, just because, it, to me, this is like the blue that I would want for it. So, uh, adding the mask as a slightly different color, again, just changes the visual style a little bit, really makes the um, that V still pop out a lot, which is nice. Now, we are going to add some white and do some highlights mainly on the nose and then the, the cheek ridges on the bottom and then the top of the mask itself um, and this is going to pop out more once I black line it Alright, so now I have just pure white. This is the only time I'm using pure white here, and this is for the inside of his visors. Um, by all means, do this before you do the highlight level, and then your highlight can kind of touch up the white a little bit. But um, it conveniently, in the comics and stuff like that, a lot of times you get just this white um, like visor-looking thing instead of their actual eyes, and it makes it where you don't have to draw eyes, which is awesome. Now, for his sticks, I went with Shining Silver. You could have done just plain white though. I was tempted to do just a, a, a white and then maybe even a white with a little bit of blue tint in it, like a blue wash to thin the white. Um, just like two drops kind of thing, maybe one drop. Uh, because sometimes, you know, they look like that where they're really reflective and sometimes they look more like they're, you know, a real material. In the end, I didn't want to do the white because I felt that would make them look too much like Tron, too kind of sci-fi-y, and I wanted this to still be kind of realistic. Um, and so I went with the Shining Silver, which is a very bright silver. I'm not worrying about a highlight or anything like that. I just, uh, they're just these kind of metal sticks that he has. Uh, no oil on the base, as you know. Again, I do this with every miniature in this series. It's just kind of letting that pool into the crevices, and then we'll do that normal dry brush, and it'll look fantastic. Speaking of dry brush, here we are with Ash Gray. Again, not very much on the brush and then very light strokes, so you're going to have to go over multiple times to really transfer that paint, but it will transfer and it'll look really good. Um, one of the things I actually like about this is you can actually add, again, some texture, right? If you if you go all in one direction or even in multiple directions, you'll get some lines, and I actually really like that. It kind of makes it look kind of like a, a, a more pavement style kind of uh, highlight. And now we're onto the black lining. And so again, I'm just gonna kind of trace more or less where it pooled. I might go a little excessive in some spots just because, uh, you know, for style things. Um, and this is kind of fun right here. So you see how it pooled in there? I'm gonna fill that all in with black. I did this with a few minis now. Um, and I really like those kind of blotches there where it just kind of changes it. Now, in between here, I didn't necessarily need to add the black here. I could have just done it between the fingers. Uh, however, I thought that that made the highlight pop out more. So again, you, anytime you have a highlight, you have the option of adding uh, black. And so sometimes I added the black because there was a, a crease there where you want it. And sometimes I'm just lining the highlight so that it pops out the highlight and kind of just adds a sense of curvature or something like that. But um, and then we're going to have the little, uh, it kind of reminds me of like the Assassin's Creed symbol there in the middle now with the black line. but. I, I, again, I think it looks great. Now we're also going to do the face here. You want to be very careful here. I'm doing underneath the jawline and then a little bit on the ear just to kind of, because the ears are so subtle, I want to make sure those are kind of uh, popped out. And then otherwise underneath the, the chin area. It adds a bit of like a dramatic shadow. Um, and it really gives a sense of, see how his profile you can really see now. I did not do the mouth though. Uh, it was an option to or not. I felt that it, it would, it would not look good. And so I opted not to, 
not to do that. If I maybe had a teeny tiny micron pin, maybe. Um, but otherwise, I'm just gonna pop, I'm gonna outline the mask here, and that's gonna be plenty of pop for me for the face. Alright, now we're almost done here. We're going to do the Void Shield Blue. Again, as I said, you can see the difference in the coverage. This is a, a very similar lightness of blue on this black, and as you can see, the coverage is just not there with this Void Shield Blue like it is with the Vallejo. Vallejo is always great with their coverage, and I'm always really happy with them. Army Painter has some great colors, and they're a great price. I think there's a place for both, but you could definitely tell the difference here. This needed, this needed about three, four coats before I was really happy with it. Now, I've already matte varnished this, but I want those sticks to, again, kind of pop a little bit. So I have some brush on Tester's gloss coat. Uh, it's just a, a gloss varnish that I'm just lightly brushing onto here. You want to make sure that you uh, varnish it first and that it sticks there. Um, if it's not fully dry, this can pull it up a little bit, and that's never a good thing. Um, but yeah, this is just a little bit, just to give it that little bit of shininess. It's not there to to add in reflect or anything, it just makes it look a little bit more metallic. And here is him, here's Nightwing, the final miniature version of him, the better than Batman Nightwing, and I must say I am really, really happy with him. I think he turned out great. I love the how reflective his bodysuit looks, I really like this style, and the fact that he's mostly black means that you can prime him in black and then be almost done. I mean, it's a real quick thing. I mean, I spent some time with the black lining and the colors and the highlights and all that stuff, but it saved me the time of actually painting him black, which was, I think, in the long run, a good thing. In fact, there's several uh, uh, characters that are like mostly black, and so if you take out those Batwomans, Cassandra Canes, and all those kind of stuff, and prime them all black, you are already almost done with a whole bunch of minis, which is really great. In fact, I batch painted several of these, and I absolutely hated it because I hate batch painting. However, it was also kind of convenient just to film them all and get them all done. And uh, is it, like highlighting the black was highlighting the black on all of them, so that worked out pretty well. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed painting him. I wanted to paint Nightwing as one of my first ones for so long now because I am a big fan of the character, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did enjoy it, let me know with the like button. That helps out the video. It's free to do. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell icon if you want to see more paintings, more Kickstarter videos, unboxing videos, reviews, all that kind of board gaming Kickstarter goodness. You know how to do that. Again, it's free and it helps. Uh, otherwise, let me know in the comments below what else you're looking for. I'm going to show you how I'm doing the capes now, and that's really interesting next time, so I hope you enjoy that, and have a wonderful day.